Welcome to our channel. Today we're diving deep into the world of automobiles to debunk some of the most common car myths. Buckle up and get ready for a wild ride as we separate fact from fiction. You see, just like in the Mythbusters workshop, we're all about putting these claims to the test. We're talking real-world experiments, digging into the science, and consulting the experts to uncover the truth behind these persistent car myths. So whether you're a seasoned gearhead or a casual driver, get ready to have your preconceived notions challenged. Let's get started. Okay, let's talk about this classic car myth. Red cars attract more speeding tickets. It's like a siren song for cops, right? But is there any truth to it? We hit the streets to investigate. We talked to drivers of red cars, folks with other car colors, and even consulted with some friendly law enforcement officers. And you know what we found? This myth is totally busted. Police officers are trained to spot dangerous driving behaviors, not car colors. Speeding, reckless driving, and ignoring traffic signals are what catch their attention. So, if you're thinking of trading in your red sports car for a more subdued color, don't worry. Just drive safely and responsibly. Remember, it's not the color of your car that gets you in trouble, it's your driving habits. Let's move on to the next myth. Now let's talk about fuel. Does premium gasoline really give your car that extra oomph? It sounds good in theory, but does it hold up in reality? To find out, we took two identical cars, one running on regular gas and the other on premium. We put them through a series of tests, measuring their acceleration, fuel efficiency, and even engine noise. And guess what? For most cars, the difference was negligible. Unless your car's engine is specifically designed for high-octane fuel, using premium gasoline is like throwing money out the window. Modern engines are incredibly sophisticated. They can adjust their performance based on the type of fuel you use. So, for the vast majority of vehicles, regular gasoline does the job just fine. Save your hard-earned cash and stick with regular gas unless your owner's manual specifically recommends premium. Now let's shift gears and tackle another common car myth. Chapter 3, Manual versus Automatic, the Fuel Efficiency Face-Off. For years, manual transmissions were hailed as the champions of fuel efficiency. But is that still the case? With the rise of advanced automatic transmissions, we decided to put this age-old debate to rest. We gathered a manual car and an automatic car with comparable engine sizes and took them on a fuel economy challenge. We drove them through city streets, highways, and even some winding back roads to simulate real-world driving conditions, and the results might surprise you. Modern automatic transmissions have come a long way. They're now equipped with features like dual clutch systems and more gears, making them incredibly efficient. In fact, some automatics even surpass the manual transmission in our test. So, if you're clinging to the belief that manuals are always more fuel efficient, it's time to update your thinking. Technology has leveled the playing field. Now let's move on to another myth that's been around for ages. Chapter 4. Warming up your car, necessary ritual or wasteful habit. Remember those chilly mornings when your parents would let the car idle for what seemed like an eternity? They swore it was necessary to warm up the engine. But is that still true with modern cars? Let's find out. We took a trip to a cold weather testing facility to see how modern engines perform under frigid conditions. We started up a car that had been sitting in freezing temperatures overnight and monitored its engine temperature, emissions, and overall performance. And guess what? Modern engines are designed to heat up quickly, even in extreme cold. Idling for extended periods is not only unnecessary, but also harmful to your engine and the environment. The best way to warm up your car is to drive it gently for the first few minutes. This allows the engine to reach its optimal operating temperature much faster and reduces wear and tear. So ditch the idling habit and embrace a more efficient and eco-friendly approach to warming up your car. Chapter 5. The 3000 Mile Oil Change Factor Fiction. Ah, the infamous 3000 Mile Oil Change Rule. It's been passed down through generations of drivers like a sacred automotive commandment. But is it still relevant today? Let's consult the experts. We reached out to automotive engineers and mechanics to get their take on this persistent myth. And their answer was unanimous. The 3000 mile oil change is outdated. Modern engines and oil formulations have advanced significantly. 
Many cars can now go 5,000 to 7,500 miles or even longer between oil changes. The best way to determine the right oil change interval for your car is to consult your owner's manual. It will provide you with the manufacturer's recommendations based on your specific make and model. Don't fall victim to unnecessary oil changes. Follow your owner's manual and save yourself some time and money.